Hello everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch Oasis League. We are deep in Tier 3 playoffs right now with the second semi-final of the week, White Walkers versus Valhalla. Last night we saw Pizza Planet defeat Diving Phoenix in an epic map 5. This match right here will determine Pizza Planet's opponent in the championship. This is going to be and in another incredible game. I can already feel it. I am joined by Psychomantis. Psych. I know. If if it's anything like the game last night, we are in for a massive treat. Also, I'll shout out the uh, caster for tonight or the streamer is a Time Piece. So make sure to thank her. And of course, I am Mr. Game and Kirby, power rankings guru, podcast extraordinaire. But we don't need to get into that because we have a game on our hands and we're actually going to start on Busan so we've been randomizing this first map here to kind of not not to give either team like an advantage right off the bat it's all random like obviously one of these teams will be favored on this map but again like no team got to choose so we'll be here on Busan Ooh. Kirby, I just discovered something about this map I've never seen before. What is that? You go, you got that little room with the drum? Not the, the, the one I'm pointing, but the other one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a weird creature on top of this that I have never seen yeah, like, before. Like I didn't a, know it was here. Tiger. Interesting. Yeah, nice. I, have, I never noticed that. I just saw I think that took me a while to notice is that there's a turtle holding the other drum, which is kind of interesting. There's a lot of little details. But Ooh, I didn't know here we go. We are going to see the, the Rhine Zarya mirror here. And I'm going to be on that junk rat instead of the signature tracer. And Lil Masala going to be on the Hanzo. We got Reflex and Pop Champ on the Torb Tracer combo. And then we also have a mirror on the support. So here we go. Both of these Reinhardts on the point trying to swing away. Richard has the superior alt charge right now, but aka Reflex's tire is already down. Both of the tanks on Valhalla are relatively low, but they do get the healer. The point is still up for grabs. No picks yet. So we see PogChamp trying to get into these back lines, trying to find those picks, and Bleem actually gets caught in a trap. Easily taken down by Lil Masala and Richard trying to turn it around with a pin. Not able to find anything. Groudaddy is down as well, so no shield for either team. And we do see Cloud Lemon building up or popping the first ultimate with the Coalescence. Valhalla trying to remain disciplined here, not use any ults considering how close they are to getting the point. But that's a nice stick from PogChamp. That might be what they need to turn over the fight. And we are going to see a couple alts come out here on the side of Valhalla, but Richard able to fire strike and post tire. That's huge. Proud Addy with a nice shatter, and that will take out Richard, but Musketeer able to drop the sound barrier, and we do see Valhalla able to counter the point. But the team fight is slow for grabs. So many alts have already been popped. There's the grab from Dream. Not really enough follow-up though. Or if anything, the peel from Bean Ant with the coalescence was able to keep him up. But at the end of the day, AKA Reflex and Bleem able to clean it up and they will recapture the point here and overall win that first team fight, which went on for a very long time. Definitely shout out to both team supports, not really letting anyone go down for that long, really long time. Goes to show you the strength of both teams. Really hard for you to decide to get a pick down there. But look at this, Cloud Lemon already approaching another coalescence, whereas Yant, they tried to hold on to it, thinking that they could win the fight, but maybe they should have popped it a little bit sooner. So now here we go. Cloud Lemon. Right in the front lines here, gets the bubble from BX Hunter. They are gonna have to watch out for Hogchamp, who has been causing a lot of problems in the back line. And we do see Cloud Lemon trying to go aggressive with the Coalescence. Yeah, I'm seeing Daddy with a nice block too. Yeah, good block from Brow Daddy on Richard's Shatter. And Brow Daddy able to fire strike, aka Reflex. So we have seen several alts being expended, and that's a nice Shatter from Brow Daddy. And it looks like Valhalla, they're probably going to be able to take this point back as White Walkers were able to get it to about 60%. Still winnable for either side here, only 63%. That's more than a fight re retake if White Walkers take it back. 
for a Valhalla, so it's still gonna be any team's game right here. Big thing here is Ampo's tire. Will Richard be able to go for two for two here and take out the tire mm -hmm. once again? Or will Ampo be able to get a big pick? He actually starts it off taking out Reflex. So White Walker is gonna be a little bit patient with this next team fight. We're already gonna see Valhalla get almost a 50% here on the point, so. And yeah, they're approaching they that Grab good. Dragons combo, which could be a win condition next fight. Musketeer does have the beat though, so they need to take out that Lucio to get that combo down. Gleam also has the Graviton Surge as well, but Pogchamp goes down, nice shots from Masala. And here we go, Grav and Tire coming out, not gonna find anything. In fact, Musketeer it had that sound area. They used it incredibly well, and here comes Gleam's uh, Graviton. Both of the coalescences are out as well as reflexes. Molten Core, there's the dragons and the sound barrier off the side of Ball Hollow, but they haven't really found anything yet. Finally, picks are going both ways right now. White Walker's down there, Moira, but Rao Daddy at this fight, that's gonna be troublesome, especially with the shatter coming up for Richard. And that is a beautiful clean up here on the side of White Walkers. They will retake Definitely. the point, but so they definitely some unfortunate misses on the combos on the side of Valhalla. They had a lot of ults right there, which just a little bit short in the comboing. If they could have got that together, it might have been a different fight right there, but this isn't over yet. Valhalla did get it to one fight territory, but they are very much lacking in the alt resource department, as is White Walkers. And Reflex gets the headshot onto the Lucio. And Valhalla, they're gonna have to commit to this right away, and Bleem blocks the Shatter with a personal bubble. There's the pulse bomb out the pop chain. It's fine. I think in fact Buscadier is down, but Brown Daddy left himself vulnerable to Bleem, and it does look like White Walkers should be able to clean up this first team fight, and, and they will win the first fight here, or the first point here on Busan. Unfortunately. Yeah, they Valhalla definitely had the alt advantage there while they were holding the points. Yeah, you're right. They just didn't quite get those combos online. Of course, Musketeer had that great sound barrier, which I think negated two alts. But yeah, it was definitely true with that. I just think maybe the Valhalla was a little bit impatient in using those alts as they kinda waited well, they didn't wait long enough for the team to get close enough to them. The tire had to be popped way far away from the enemy team, giving the Lucia plenty of time to react to it. It almost got popped, and by the time I would have liked to see maybe it ride around a little bit to see if it could have came back around and get some damage done, especially when it's so far away. And then the grab, unfortunately, falling a little bit short and missed the team. Just a little bit maybe impatience, unfortunately, got the better of them. So it looks like... Oh. Where... Okay. Uh, Brow Daddy called for a pause. I don't know if this will count as one of their pauses, but, but no matter. It was incredibly quick, and we are going to see a couple swaps on both of these teams. We are going to see Mistola take that Widow, which is also popular here on the downtown portion of Musan Pog Jam. AK Reflex is going to swap to the Sovereign over maybe a little, little bit more of a brawl. Um, they, they had a pretty brawly pop in the previous one, but even more so with the Reaper, and they will immediately get to point and get all the picks in the world. Maybe not enough healing on the side of Valhalla with the Lucio Mercy, but we'll see. White Walker's able to capture this point first. Interesting to see how they choose to attack here with the Widow. Oh no, they see, they see the swap. I like that swap, especially when you're trying to push onto the point. That McCree will give a little more versatility, especially with that Somber and Reaper combo. As we do see two of them on the high ground, that Junkrat almost finding. Backside rotation. Go towards the train. Right, but here comes it. Lucio! Ooh, yeah, Musketeer trying to go through the boobs. Not going really to find anything. It does have to get away. It has to watch out for those close quarters, as Antho and Masala can do a lot of damage in that regard. But it is the opposite going on here in the this team fight. All the picks are going in favor of White Walkers. And we're able to find pick onto Musketeer. But I don't think that's going to be enough to turn the team fight around. Richard and Bleem going to try and get aggressive to pick, take out these stragglers. And they are going to get some nice staggers going on here. They even take out wow. Browdow. Wow. That was a beautiful, aggressive push there by White Walkers to further win that team fight, and they're already at 60% here. 
I'd like downtown. to see some of them jump off the map there to get the quick reset rather than draw them out. Yeah, especially I don't think they had the Lucio, so they couldn't get out as quickly as they would expect. Oh, oh and open the fire! But Richard got it again! Oh my goodness, and this is not looking good. EMP comes out from Reflex. Not a whole lot of follow up, and it honestly, might not have been needed. I think the picks were already going in favor of White Walkers, but they're almost done anyway. Might as well. Or they've almost won this point anyway. Might as well just expend the ultimates, and they even still have the Death Blossom. This is going to be a very tough contest here. From if they make it, Valhalla. They do. Oh, the Rye with a deep pin. Oh, nice fade from Cloud Woman to survive, but that's actually a really good shatter. Get the follow up there. Hogchamp coming in with the Death Blossom. Only gonna find one, and Valhalla actually very close to maybe turning this around. Robasala able to find one with the High Noon and Ampo coming back on the Tracer. Able to take out Gleam. This team fight is incredibly close. Really only Cloud Lemon on the point, and Valhalla remain alive in this map. But they are gonna have to make a 99% comeback in order to do so. Mm -hmm. Definitely getting an easy tracer build up this pulse bomb and try to combo with the grab. I feel like they're, they're gonna need that to be a win condition for them. So, here we go. Grab up the DX Hunter. We'll see. What's an issue with it? No, Richard is actually gonna Great start beat, though. the shatter. Yep, Weird Hex had the nice sound barrier. And there's the grab, but not gonna find much. In fact, he gets the opening pick, and both of the sports gonna pop their alts. This is not looking good for Valhalla. They've already lost three. Pog Champ is down, but I don't think it's gonna matter too much here. Gleam has the Graviton Surge to make sure they don't touch the point. You see Amco still trying to contest for as long as he can. Throws out the pulse bomb, not able to find anything. Is down. The overtime is ticking away. It looks like these tanks aren't gonna make it. It looks like they were, but that will be White Walkers taking Busan here and the one nothing series lead. Richard got a scope on that hammer. <laughs> yeah, taking out all those tires. That. His incredible play, I mean, those tires really could have turned team fights on their head. And just great clutch plays from a lot of members of White Walkers here. We saw Richard with those great fire strikes. We saw Bleem building up grass incredibly quickly. Cloud, Lemon, and Muscadier with great support alts. White Walkers obviously being the one seed, they have been remarkable this season, only dropping one game to Diving Phoenix, and even then, like, they, they, they played uncharacteristically bad in that game. If they are on point, they are borderline unbeatable at times, so Valhalla, yep. they're really gonna have to search inside themselves to pull off this upset, which I, of course they're capable of. They literally just beat the two seed last mm -hmm. week. They beat Nova, so there is some upside with this team, and that, that's kind of interesting considering we kind of saw Valhalla maybe limp into the playoffs a little bit. They lost a lot of their players towards the end of the season. They, they lost a big game to Nova 4-0, but they really bounced back in the playoffs. They picked up some players, and you know, they, they've been on the up and up, so I, I think that this game is certainly not over, although I'm really good on those control maps, so tough to to lose a mm -hmm. map type you're strong at right off the bat. I definitely but think... Now, uh... Go for it. Oh, I was definitely thinking that Valhalla needs to just keep out of their mind who they're playing up against, and I think it might be getting in their head a little bit, especially when they're making their mistakes. It seems like after they had that one really bad combo mistake there on the, the first map. They never really got together as well after that. They were playing tremendous in the beginning, and I think they gotta just you know, get back to basics, know who they are, what they're capable of doing, and they can hit the ground. And they're definitely capable of beating White Walkers, as it showed in the beginning of that first map. It's interesting, because you could argue that White Walkers, in terms of technical skill, or like mechanical skill, and overall just skill as individuals like they're good obviously but you could argue that each of their players aside from maybe bleem who has been one of the best 
tanks in the entire league this season. You could argue that none of them are truly at that elite level, but what makes them so strong is their team coordination, their alt usage, their team compositions. They do an excellent job at that. So for Valhalla, that is the one thing you kind of need to do. You can't really frag out against this team. You have to play clean Overwatch. You have to have the right team compositions. Really, you almost have to win Overwatch at a fundamental level. To, to be able to beat the White Walkers. And we actually did see Diving Phoenix be able to do that. They were running probably the superior comps in their previous game, and they have the players to pop off that can beat the White Walkers. So we'll have to see mm -hmm. about how see. Is We will see Drogon and Panderp in here on the tank now. With... I mean, on the tank, sorry, DPS. Yes. Uh, <laughs> say, whoa. That'd, be, that'd be a mix up. <laughs> yeah, breaking news. Charles on DPS, Drogon on tank. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that would be very crazy. So, I don't know if we've seen... Okay, we are... I think we're going to see King Row next for our next map. It will be Valhalla's choice. be interesting if we see a Pharah, maybe, with Drogon in on that map. Yeah, that would... That would definitely not surprise me, and we might see the hit scan coming out from Pander, which they have been fantastic on all season. We're gonna Fair see ass, a couple combo. of yeah. we are gonna see a couple of subs in here for Valhalla. Uh, Ravioli Stain coming in, who's been one of their best players all season, been great on that DPS role. Has had to flex a little bit as some of their depth has been thin as of late, but we're also going to see uh, Book of Sorrows come in, who I believe played pretty well in their game against Nova, so perhaps maybe get a little bit more DPS firepower in here with Ravioli Stain and Ampo, maybe having better synergy considering that Lil Masal is still relatively new to the team, although did have a great performance against Nova, so We'll have to see. Maybe, maybe Ravioli Stain coming in will be able to maybe be a little bit more flexible, as you could argue Ravioli Stain is one of the more flexible players in Tier 3. So, here we go. We are heading to our second map. Can we see if Valhalla can do what Diving Phoenix did and bounce back right after the first map and tie it up here? Or will White Walkers take the 2-0 lead, which will require Valhalla to get the reverse sweep, which is especially more difficult in the playoffs, as you have to navigate not just one, but two of your opponent's map picks. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's the same. If, if the team, if the enemy team is picking the maps, you know, that's unfortunate. You don't get to pick the maps you're playing on, but if, if they're picking the maps, it means you're winning, so that's good that's for true. you. That's true. And anything that gives you positive momentum is incredibly huge in this game. Ready. So here we are. What are we going to see from Valhalla on this defense here? We are going to see the, the May Torbjorn. That is a very interesting comp, as well as the Ana Bap, so kind of two main healers. They are going to stick on the Rhine Zarya, I would imagine. We're not going to see too much different, as that is almost exclusively what Browdaddy and the BX Hunter have been playing as of late, and it is still a relatively good comp, especially if you want to play a Brawl style, which it looks like Valhalla once again is going to here with the main Torb. As for the side of White Walker, it's probably also gonna see 
the Ryan Zarya once again, but Rito Pander maybe just looking for opening shots. And she might want to see his game. Inside of Valhalla, push with Drogon in, see if they're gonna be able to shut him down. Yeah, early lamp gonna, though. It is gonna be incredibly difficult. Yeah, we did see immortality already out from Reflex, who's actually on support. I don't know if I've seen Reflex on support this season yet. But they are pretty good, good at hit stance. I could imagine them being pretty good at that. So, here we go. You see Valhalla, they're kind of backing up towards the corner here. They're having trouble with this Farah already. Nothing to really it's good anti-nade onto the tanks of Valhalla, but not really any follow-up there. And another questionable immortality field this time from Ian. He gets taken down, young Drogon. Ooh, accidentally falls, so teamfight is relatively even, but Cloud Lemon could maybe get that res here, especially with Panther taking out the Sorrows as well, smart this right now for Valhalla, and with Gleam taking out the BX Hunter, I think it's only a matter of time before White Walkers are able to turn this around. They're not even particularly coming up on too many alts right now, and AK Reflex pops the first one with the Hand Matrix, and that should be enough to take point A here from White Walkers. We will see uh, White Walkers pushing up here, making space. Pharmacy way up almost on the sec end of second point here. They need to be careful how to get picked here. Ravioli on the soldier now, along with Tracer. Uh, interesting, they swapped off. They, they lost both their old charge, I think, there, right? Yeah, it, it makes sense though, because Young Drogon went almost completely uncontested. Yes, maybe maybe Ampo should have waited to swap off the the May to use. Yeah, I think that Blizzard could have been big. Yeah, that could have really helped him. Although you, you could also argue that maybe not, because there might be only three targets you can effectively get with the Blizzard, mm. considering that fire at first. Oh, he's huge grab. Good immortality field there from B and saving the team for now, but Brow Daddy already down. They even had the the nade from Sorrows there, but it wasn't enough. And White Walkers really snowballing this streets phase. They're gonna have over five minutes in their time bank as long as they uh, push the payload here, but Sorrows. Yep. Probably not going to be able to get away, and yeah, five minutes and 18 seconds in order to get it through point C. This is looking incredibly dire for Valhalla. They're going to need to come up with a big play, and they do have several alts to their name, but Pander is going to pop the sights in order to think about where members of Valhalla are position, especially since they probably know several alts are coming online. The X Hunter almost goes down, forces out the immortality field from the and there is the Graviton Surge, but nice immortality field from Reflex. Really showing some nice things on this map right now. Pander able to headshot the X Hunter. There's a shatter from Brow Daddy. It's not gonna really find anything. I think Richard used his as well. I don't know how much follow up that one had as well. And we are gonna see Ravioli Sane trying to continue to turn this around with the attack fights are able to take out the other Drogon. That is massive. But White Walker is still going to try and commit to this. They pop the ammo in case of Matrix, but that might have been a mistake. But it goes down. They're going to commit the mana boost onto the Ryan Valhalla R. And that should be enough to be able to stabilize here. So, good stabilization Finally. from Valhalla, but they still have four minutes mm -hmm. in this time bank to whittle down. I mean, at this point. Oh, pause, pause, pause. pause. They're gonna see Pander. With the pause with the swiftness. Timepiece on their game today. That's good. <laughs> Let's see. Always wanna make sure that these pauses are available. You don't wanna see uh 5v6 have to continue, so. But did they have any old charge when they got DC'd? I'm not sure, but it, it was Widow and as is oh, okay. underrated yeah. as Sites as an alt, like Obviously, Please. the biggest thing with Widow is just getting the headshots, you know, like that's and just creating those long sight lines. <laughs> Got a funny message in match chat here. Famous last words from Pander before the DC. I'm lagging. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like they have rejoined mm -hmm. the 
able to resume normal play here momentarily. As we look at these teams, we actually did see Valhalla have to use a lot of alts, but White Walkers, they, they use quite a bit as well. They have the barrage available. That might be what they can use to mm. potentially finish off this push, especially if they're able to build up the Shatter, which they are getting relatively close to, although Brow Daddy ahead in that regard. Ampo with the Pulse Bomb. It'll be He's interesting to see which DPS all has the... As Bigger value. As much as you hate over ulting in this scenario when White Walkers have so much momentum, you need to do whatever you can just to stop them to give yourself a chance to be able to slow this progress down. And, and you know, it definitely also could be argued, you know, it, King's Row has always been a little bit more of an attack oriented map, but this point C can be tricky at times. There, there are ways to hold it, especially yeah, to gnarly corners that it has. Oh, oh Brow Daddy. Throwing in the shatter, but not gonna find anything. And Bro Young Drogon gets right in the thick of Ooh. things and gets a 4k Young Drogon. Been one of them. Yeah, been one of the best Faras in tier 3 this season. Ampo did actually get a stick with the pulse bomb, but Reflex with the great timing to get the immortality feed down. So here we go, payload approach in the end. We are gonna see another. Beacon test here on the side of Valhalla. Here is CPX Hunter. Oh no, that right left. Ball. And here we go, but a nice shatter from Richard. But an immortality field that's actually out of reflex to keep Richard able to follow up on that shatter. And the picks are once again going in favor of White Walkers. We even see both support alts coming out of reflex with the perfect positioning on this ant matrix. That will be it. Two minutes and 34 seconds in the time bank here for White Walkers. Not as disastrous for Valhalla as it was looking at first, but still that is going to be a very tough time bank to meet. Yeah, I definitely think they had some missed opportunities to slow them down on second point. Kind of Valhalla after they gave up first point. They let the, the pharmacy push up on them hard, they never really pushed back, and they gave up almost the whole entire progress down streets phase, almost for free. They didn't contest until it was all the way on, I think, near the end, on the last bend. That was a big reason why White Walkers had so much progress, because they only took one peen fight for that entire push. They didn't, like, take an early fight and then die off and then come back on that last section, you know? Ready. So here we go, now they are on the, ta the attack, and perhaps we will see... M maybe they, they even do get a, a greater time bank, that will be very difficult, but... As I said, King's Row can be a very... Not only offensive-oriented map, but, but it can be a snowball map, you know? It, it is... A lot of people do love this map, and for good reason. It is very balanced, but, you know, at times, if... This is definitely one of those maps that you frequently see big snowballs. Five, Especially when it's the winter version. Two, one. <laughs> that uh, that was a good one. That was <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> but here we go. We are going to see the barrel once again out from the drogon on the defense. Ravioli stain on the ash this time, so they do have the immediate hit scan in order to counter it. Panther also on that signature ash, one of the best ashes. Can you see some Zenyatta Kirby? That is great to see, but definitely low healing on the side of Valhalla. They're really wanting to play aggressive, and I don't know if this is necessarily the DPS skill you want to do it with. And yeah, right off the bat, Panther. <laughs> Three picks in that team fight. That was remarkable here on the side. Panther even getting one more absolutely yeah. sensational gameplay here from Panther. I agree. I agree with what you were saying. I think there's lots of great characters they're picking, but they're not really comboing. Right? Especially when you're running a D.Va, you want to make sure you have somebody so that when that D.Va goes in and dives somebody, they can get healed up pretty quickly so they don't just get taken out of mech instantly when they have to dive those targets. I do like the tracer a little bit more, so you can maybe coordinate those discord orbs, but nice dynamite onto the mercy here, and it's very low, but we'll get the healing that they need, and they can use the Valkyrie, they might want to initiate with this now, while they Valhalla have the slight alt advantage, although, as I say, that two alts coming online is weird. 
white walkers. You see the immortality healed coming out from reflex to take the lot. There's the shatter coming out from the X Hunter, and they're gonna try and go aggressive with the sound barrier that actually did support or they stack support all not ideal. Ample did get two kills, but young Drogon turning this around. Rez is on both sides, but it looks like the picks are going in favor of White Walker. The Masar was able to take out one, but only two remaining on the side of Valhalla. Gleam even trying to get aggressive on the Sigma. That will be a nice team fight victory here on the side of White Walkers. That that team fight was looking definitely a little shaky when they used the transcendence to go aggressive, but they were able to stabilize and move up the ults that they needed. So here we go, Amp Matrix coming out from Reflex. Without Eddie throwing in the Eagle Bomb that will not find anything. Both the Mortality Field and the Shield were there in order to stop it. It's under already down. We are gonna see Lucasaro is actually finding a headshot on the Panther if that's huge. It might get res though by Cloud Butter. And here comes Ravioli Stains Bob. But with the double shield, that will be a tough value finder. But it actually it goes. Takes out yeah, it targets the fair, and Lucasaro is building up another transcendence. That's actually huge as they're able to go aggressive and Valhalla. Looks like they are gonna be able to capture point A. They did use a couple of vaults, actually they really only did use two, the Bob and the Transcendence, so decent, decent alt management here, but look at how many alts are on the side of the White Walkers, although also they shout out out that last fight, wins. the last fight shout out Bleem ate the, actually the, the, the Pulse Bomb, a little, it didn't really unfortunately help them win, but he, that's a big eat, especially as a Sigma, that's hard to do. Interesting to see Valhalla. Interesting to see White Walkers come into that fight despite probably losing it. They actually did get a lot of picks, but obviously they won't matter. All the respawns are coming back. This young Drogon in the back line gonna solo ult and oh, that is very interesting. I mean, it does get a pick and they are gonna throw in Bob. Hopefully that won't be too much of a waste here. And young Drogon is actually down. Bob not finding too much, but does get Brow Daddy out of the mech, no longer available anymore. And now the alt advantage is definitely a lot more even between these teams, definitely not the results you wanted to see from some high impact alts on the side of White Walkers, but can finding the headshot on the Ample, that is a beautiful shatter from the X Hunter, but not, not enough follow up here. Another good shatter from Richard, but once again, no follow up from that one either. Ooh, good disruption from Brown Daddy on the Cloud Lemon's res. Not going to be able to find it, and they're going to try and go once again aggressive with Book of Sorrow's Transcendence. They're going to have to be careful though, they got to play the sight lines on this Ant Matrix on the side of AK Reflex. Halo's still moving, but the picks are going back in favor of Young, er, not Young Drogon, of, of White Walkers, although Young Drogon is getting the picks here. And Ravioli Steen actually gonna swap off of the hit scan onto the Sombra, despite Baron not going away on the side of White Walkers. And yeah, it looks like we are gonna see Valhalla kinda have to back up. Book of Sorrow is able to get one pick, but that will be the res back up. Yeah, this is this is a risky play here from Valhalla as they almost are certainly not gonna be able to build up the EMP for at least point B, they definitely could use it to solve all point C, but it's gonna be tough. Oh no! Ooh, that was close. Bump, not really able to find anything good in town field out from Reflex, although I think the shield was there from Richard and pops a huge shatter. White Walkers, knowing that they can win it right here, are gonna pop almost everything, but they even still have the support alts. And this is not looking good for Valhalla. Are they even gonna Book be able to touch? Book, Book might make it, he's, he's careful. Oh, he's gonna go a little too soon though. They're gonna get killed. He might get killed before he can test. 
you need to stay up for the last three seconds and he will be able to the overtime will be initiated but are the two picks in the favor of white walkers happy always saying getting close to that emp but gets taken down both pander and young Grogon assisting on that one and i think that will be all she wrote for king's row and white walkers they take a two nothing lead currently on a five map win streak here in the playoffs they have been electrifying so far as they were in the regular season. Two in a row in King's Row. White Walker's looking to walk their way down into the finals. Yep, I definitely think Justice most people were in agreement that White Walkers were definitely the favorite to make it to the championship for sure and definitely to win it. I mean, they spent number one they, they spent the entire season at number one in my power ranking if you discount the preseason power rankings please do not bring up the preseason power rankings uh, but uh yeah they are definitely showing that they're not they're not slowing down in this playoffs despite getting a couple of semi not easy matchups i would say but definitely they've gotten the two lowest seeds the seven and eight seed they beat we the ops in the first round now they're getting Valhalla the eighth seed here in the second round you know that they, they want to win this championship they, they they want to win every single game that has been the case like they have not taken it easy on some of their quote-unquote easier matchups and they've even beat a lot of the best teams in the league throughout the season certainly Certainly still showing it here in the postseason. Anubis, we will see. Ooh, interesting. I think... You know, it's interesting. That was actually the map that Nova picked in their game, and they actually lost on it, so... Definitely an interesting choice coming out here from from Valhalla. I, I honestly thought maybe they would go with Hanamura. They looked pretty good on that map. I think both times it was in the map rotation. So definitely an interesting choice. But again, you know, it's, it's tough to know what these teams want to run. Although... We'll see what White Walkers want to run here. It is definitely going to be tough if White Walkers start on the defense, maybe with Pander up on the the Ash and Young Drogon on the Farah. Uh, what would be even better? Oh, they might even put Silent Tamer in to get oh. the Junkrat in play. Oof. I don't know, that would, folks. That, that is be going to be brutal to oh, get. Oh, they to. do. Silent Tamer's in with Reflex. We will see Charles in. Flex. Yep, Charles coming in here. Definitely one of the favorite team members of this team, as we have seen a lot of these players having alt accounts that further the Charles name. Charles 8 Tang, Charles 9 Tang. I think they have like, I think everyone on the team has an alt account, so it's like 1 through 12 Charles Tangs they've got, so. <laughs> He's like the mascot but, of the team. Yeah, and for sure one of the one of our fellow stream team members had a great mm -hmm. call of the tier two championship game, which if you have not watched that VOD replay, you have to. It is easily maybe maybe not easily the best game we've ever seen in this server, but my god, it is definitely up there. That was incredibly back and forth it was intense the maps were close so much on the line for both teams i don't want to make sure you've finished watching this stream because you don't want to miss if valhalla is able to get an incredible reverse sweep which is still on the table here but definitely go watch that and charles had a great call bleem also was his color there that was a Great duo. I think Kitty was casting, so it was a White Walkers crew, and we actually do see Red Hood Kitty coming in for the first time. 
tonight, so pretty much everyone on the side of White Walker is going to get some playing time tonight, and we'll see if they can close it out here or if Valhalla can turn this around, and who better to come mm -hmm. in and possibly turn this around than not PowerPoint in one of the My most favorite Microsoft program. Yeah. I personally prefer... Uh, I don't know, it's a, a sure, Excel, I guess. As oh. you no doubt see by my uh, standing spreadsheet, I enjoy thoroughly using Excel, although I use Google Sheets. So. <laughs> but the same logic would apply with Excel. But not PowerPoint has been just in nothing short of incredible these past few weeks, really put their team on their back against Pizza Planet, which was definitely a victory that I think kind of made people rethink what Valhalla's potential was, is they did look incredibly good in that game. Granted, their roster definitely does look a little different, as we did see some departures and some unfortunate losses to Diamond, the main one being... Danny actually we didn't lose in a diamond. He actually hit Masters on support, which means he is no longer able to play in Tier 3, but not PowerPoint put on a clinic in that Junkertown game against Pizza Planet, and just overall has been one of the best DPS in Tier 3 this season. So we'll see what he wants to play. He is very flexible, but definitely looks the best when he is on that hit scan, whether it be the McCree or the Widow. I think he has played a little bit of Ash this season, but definitely more known for the McCree and the Widow. Be interesting to see what kind of comp Valhalla comes out with when you have Lil Masala and not PowerPoint and two characters and players very known for their hitscan sniper ability. Maybe we'll see the PowerPoint on Junkrat. I mean, this is Junkrat's map after all. I feel like he's almost an, an, uh, a necessity for a pick. If you're not playing Junkrat, you need to at least play a Pharah, but Junkrat is almost standard for first point especially. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a... Well, it depends. Is White Walkers attacking first? Uh, yes, they are. Okay, they did. Or, or, they or did. did it the fact I think they did, right? I have no idea. They... They were, yes, they obviously they attacked her, and it looks like they are. So, but I would give a 99.9% .9 chance that Silent Tamer will play the Junkrat on defense as mm -hmm. will. Well, we'll see what Reflex plays. Plays a lot of different hits, and also might, might throw up the Echo here. That is another... Oh, do we, uh, that... do we need to start the game? It's, it's not starting. Oops. Bruh. I'm about to manually start it. Oh, there, there you go. go. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> that would that would explain why it said why it did that. Maybe because he was DCing, it didn't think the game was full. Oh, That's yeah. probably why That's it did that. Good. good point. Pander leaving the game once again. Luckily, <laughs> not in the map this time, so we'll not require a pause. You know, I, I don't know if we've I I can't remember if we've ever seen it where if a person on each team dc because then which team would get the dc the the first the, the, the first team one. that had the first dc so does that mean like if another team has a dc person it would be the first because the first uh, dc would mandate a pause so that would be your first pause there and if the other team has a dc uh and the first team's person that they got dc'd comes back, then it becomes the other team's pause, because you're still waiting okay. for the other person. Yes, that would... It, yeah, that would so it would be sense, one for actually. each, for that. Basically. If that were the scenario. Yep, unless the person who DC'd second comes back before the first person comes back, yes. and then it's just then the first team. would teams. not have to, yes, yes, because technically that's still the first team's pause, because they have not gotten their player back. Here we go, Mil Masala. Already back in, just a quick little DC. Definitely happens every once in a while. 
there's little hiccups in the in the servers not really don't think it's really anyone's fault except for just luck so that gosh darn comcast yeah don't don't uh <laughs> don't talk bad on their name we might get a DMC sponsor strike. Oh, we don't no, have to be with Comcast. They ain't gonna sponsor us if we can. We should talk trash yeah, about Comcast so we get a sponsorship from Verizon. Oh, yeah, that might not be a bad idea. Or maybe I can see Kirby. T-Mobile. T-Mobile. Kirby getting the phone. Can you hear me now? I can see Kirby right now with the, with the self trying to record the podcast. Hello, can you hear me now? <laughs> well, T-Mobile obviously being the sponsor of Plat Chat and the Overwatch mm-hmm. League as, as a whole, maybe... Maybe T-Mobile, if you got a representative watching, you know, I would love to. It's about, actually, I have no idea how many people listen to the podcast. I think, uh, I think quite a bit of people. I would only if you cosplay as then while you do the podcast, Kirby. Ready, the score well, so far done. is 2-0, White Walkers, and we're on the third map. So yes, here we go. Not PowerPoint. They are actually going to go with the double hit scan here on defense. It's definitely going sense. to be. Tough to get through, but look at this. Reflex might be showing off the sim. They might be going for a crazy sim teleport. Could just be some early. Nope, looks like. Uh, we won't read into it. Until a green it's, wannabe. It's, 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 yeah. Although I was gonna say, like, we've seen some great sim teleport strats on on most of the. the Two CP maps actually, what? so here we go. Silent Hammer gonna run the junk that on attack again, almost interesting. Is that Winston Sigma too on defense? Hmm, that is a bizarre tank combination. Pander, obviously, not stay in the game, but luckily, he's only too spectating. Ooh, yeah, power points. power points! Oh my goodness, if this is the breath of fresh air that Valhalla needed for the spark of life. This is already a good start to it, but White Walkers still kind of trying to aggress on these tanks in the front line. Maybe some Hunter incredibly low is going to be able to get the heal for now. No Masala able to get a double kill themselves. Not going to be overtaken by a power point. Both of these players are very good. The Flex able to get the pick and Weird Hex might not be able to get the rest. There's the barrier, but it's too late. Little well, Masala already has respawned. And BX Hunter getting slept by Muskadeer with the Antinade. And already building up a nano boost is Muskadeer. Here comes Charles, fully charged. Nice sleep, though, on the side of Bokasaros. That will definitely slow down the push here, but Reflex finding not power point. And Looks like the picks are going in favor of White Walker. And they will be able to capture point A. Brow Daddy still kind of hanging around here. Will we see BX Hunter try and contest? No, it does not look like it. That will be point A captured here for White Walkers. We do see both tanks while it's online, online here for uh, White Walkers. Could be huge. Especially at the five minute time slot. A lot of time here for them to be able to take this. Ooh, and nice and sleep. Hunter slept once again and taken out right away. Brown Daddy down as well. They both had their alts ready. This is gonna be a brutal start for this defense on point E for Valhalla. The both tank out alts coming online. Four of these tanks already one tick on point E. Ace Hunter popping the primal rage and Brown Daddy also popping the Gravitic Flux, all the alts actually coming out on the side of Valhalla. Looks like they probably are going to be able to turn this round. Although Silent Tamer going in the tire, able to take on not power point, so definitely still up in here. Another sleep on the BX Hunter. BX Hunter not having too much fun right now, barely being able to play the game. Little Masala gets taken out by a jump drive trap. That is incredibly unfortunate. And not power point actually coming back on the Genji. White Walker's definitely not getting the picks as fast as we hope they could, trying to take point B, and actually White Walker's content with maybe backing up right now and restabilizing, so Valhalla able to preserve their point B defense for now, but they did have to use quite a bit of ults in order to do that, although they are currently in progress of building up a lot of those once again. 
We do see Genji uh, Tracer with a Zen Mercy for healing. Some interesting comp choices here. It even pays off for them though. Yeah, they're almost going full classic dive here with the Sigma. But oh, both supports lift in the air! We're gonna see Gleam, yep, use that Davidic Flux. Not to too much avail though, in fact, Gleam is down. Charles kind of left off the drive here with the Discord. Does get the healing, actually got the Nano Boost. But with the Gravitic Flux coming off of Brow Daddy doing a lot of damage, it looks like this will be Valhalla winning another team fight, so. Team kill, so Reflex gonna swap to the Ash here. Gonna see some changes coming out on the side of White Walkers, including Silent Hammer going to his signature hero, Farah. Especially now that there is no hit scan on the side of Valhalla. Oh, uh, we are gonna see that scout coming out of the Masala. Gonna go to the Ash. Good power point swap. Has that blade though, it could be big this fight. He looks like he's about to use it. He's going up on top. Has to be careful though, it's already incredible. Oh, we are gonna actually see the X Hunter initiate with the Primal Rage. Not gonna really find anything in this really focus down hard by the lead. And here comes the blade out from not power point, and he gets shattered by Charles. Great timing on that shatter to make sure he couldn't get any value from that blade. Not powerful, like, gonna come back on the green. And the X Hunter actually takes out Charles, and here comes the Transcendence. Out for Focusaurus, who's building for these Transcendence really fast, actually. And once again, we are gonna see Valhalla able to stabilize once again. They're even gonna try and go aggressive. The X Hunter trying to find those swings onto. But they're gonna probably settle for. They've gotten both of these Sigmas are gonna have their Gravitic Fluxes for the next fight, so that might be the win condition for both teams. They're not gonna be able to get value out of this Gravitic Flux or not. So here we go, Silent Hammer did get taken out, but we'll get Red Red Hunter, so the 66 it is still up for grabs. Silent Hammer has to be careful though. With a double hit scan and a hit score goal. Definitely gonna have some. And we're just gonna see a triangle fest coming out here. It looks like the picks are currently favoring White Walkers. In fact, Silent Hammer still having the barrage here and the pop of only did not power point for now and here comes Bob out from Real Masala be able to contest the point for a little bit and once again I think just too many picks one in favor of Valhalla for White Walkers to be able to win this although the reinforcements are coming back so we are likely gonna see another quick 5v5 6 v 6 roughly and the alts are definitely coming online here for White Walkers including Bob coming in for Reflex already getting the pick onto Weird Hex Dynamite and I think it's only a matter of time unless we see some miracle play from the Masala and Rao Daddy that White Walkers will be able to officially capture point B. Will at least Valhalla be able to get this into Ooh. overtime? No, the counter pin from Charles able to keep BX Hunter mm -hmm. off the point. And that's actually huge. White Walkers with 11 seconds still in their time bank. That means. No matter what, they will get at least another attack if Valhalla do also capture both points. Yeah, Toku, the score is still 2-0 in favor of White Walkers. Definitely seeing uh, some fight though from Valhalla. They're not gonna get, get, get like lose this easily. They're fighting hard for this, so it's still anybody's game. Yeah, you know, with... With how relatively close that first point was on Busan, you know? Maybe, maybe not PowerPoint could've given them that slight edge of victory, so maybe not PowerPoint coming in here is gonna be what propels them forward in this series. Maybe we're gonna see kinda the opposite happen of what we saw transpire in the first playoff game for Nova against, or for Valhalla against Nova. 
where they won the first two maps and then lost on Temple of Anubis. Maybe again we'll see the opposite about how losing the first two maps but getting the win on Temple of Anubis. It's gonna be tough though that you have to capture both points just to get extra rounds. Very surprised here to see Junkrat on the attack side for uh, Valhalla when he didn't choose to run it on defense. Definitely think he's really good on first point in defense. Attack not as much, but you still if you get the right angles, he'd be really good. <laughs> and yeah, look at this, we are gonna see that Junkrat Ash double spam comp coming out on the side of White Walkers. This is incredibly tough. We're actually gonna see them. We go. Yeah, actually, almost mirror comps across the board, except for Musabir, Aldahana, and Usaros to come in. So here we go. Rez coming out onto Mount Palatine, and Silent Tamer is down. Red Hood Kitty gonna be able to get the Rez, but goes down, not Power Point out of this fight. So White Walkers have the Junk Rat advantage as well as the Ash advantage, aka Reflex with a nice headshot. Onto Lil Masala. BX still trying to go aggressive and actually is able to take out the beam. So the team fight is actually up for grabs. And look at this aggression from BX Hunter, aka Reflex, still up here on the high ground. But I don't know if it's going to be able to get much done other than taking out this sand. And that will be a quick point A capture here from Valhalla. We did see it from White Walkers. And Valhalla were able to whittle down the time bank, so we'll see if the White Walkers are able to do what Valhalla did on their defense. Or if we'll see a snowball here as they Valhalla, they have a lot of alts. Both teams actually have a lot of alts here, which should be interesting. Mm -hmm. So here we go, not power point already incredibly low, but let's get the healing and there's the shatter. Only gonna really take out the beam, and this is just a triangle fest. Both Valkyries out, Cyrus Hammer popping the tire is gonna be able to get one, and I think that we are gonna see Valhalla maybe lose his team fight, although the X Hunter getting the res. Yeah, especially with the power point going on. I think this is going to be it on the side of Valhalla. White Walker should be able to stabilize here, but they did use several alts, and you could definitely argue that Valhalla coming in with the alt advantage in this next team fight with the Tire, Rubidic Flux, and the Transcendence. You know, both teams running these almost identical comps. You have the situation of one team having to send the other with the Ana. One team needs to focus fire really well with those Discord orbs, and the other one needs to try to get, capitalize on those antis. The team that does a better job of their supports uh, particular thing, he's probably going to win here. We are actually going to see... Yeah, swabs, Red and Kitty Musketeer going to the Memorial of Lucio. Lil Masala getting the opening headshot, and now that they don't have the res available, this is almost a perfect opportunity here for Valhalla. Very slow. Oh! Both of the Flux out, and a nice 3k combo here from Brown Addy and not hard one, but they do need to continue to get these picks. Red Hood Kitty on the point gets the Discord Orb, and Silent Hammer actually able to take out one with the total mayhem. That was a team kill, two ticks here for Valhalla, but they need to quickly take out Blue who's on the Wrecking Ball. And here come the rest of the members of Valhalla. They already have four back on the point, and Silent Hammer coming back with the tire, able to take out two. I think we are gonna see a stabilization here, although a nice shatter Ooh. from BX Hunter, he might be able to turn this around almost all by himself, but Gleam yeah. is still relatively healthy on the point, and yeah, I think uh, this will be it. Gleam just with too much staying power on that wrecking ball, losing some members early in that team fight for Valhalla, probably it did it, and they got the team kill, but one separate one came back, they just didn't have the numbers to effectively take out Gleam, and thus switch back to the Zarya. So the X-Men are getting really aggressive with these pins. Kitty going down, but a nice shatter from Charles. The follow up is there from these DPS. They actually, uh, how they threw in the bomb. They did find one, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. They even committed the Valkyrie as well. Although the, pa the picks are definitely going back and forth, but it is going to be very difficult for them to turn around this team fight. Not PowerPoint trying to take out Red Hood Kitty, but 
is going to fall themselves. And so yeah, here we go. White Walkers doing a good job at whittling down this time bank. Only two minutes left for Valhalla, and they even used a couple alts in that last team fight. So it might be another minute, minute and a half before they're able to effectively take this point anyway. So it's going to be. Even if Valhalla attack it, it will still be a very interesting overtime round. Higher online for Silent Tamer could be huge here. We do see Shatter and Bolt Tankles on the side of Valhalla here. Which one's gonna get popped first? But it looks like with that Mercy going down right off the bat in that team fight, Valhalla. It's gonna back up, and yes, they know that they just that they need to make sure that they complete the map. They're in two it's, fight territory. They need to get in the to fight it over. And there we go, Lil Masala, able to get the opening pick and two opening picks here, and they're gonna go aggressive with the Dominic blocks, and they even have the. Transcendence to continue to go aggressive, and this is looking too good for Valhalla. Just need to take out Faleem, and I think that they will have this. A lot of alts left on the board here. Or Tire from Spawn, Musketeer with the beach just yeah, to keep themselves alive. This. Tire gets Sound one! Better. And Musketeer, I think they're actually going to be able to turn this. Look at this, four members on the side of Valhalla coming back, but BX Hunter able to get a pick on the Red Bikini, and there's a grab out from Faleem, and Silent Tamer going to be able to to turn this around. Unbelievable. They couldn't take out the Lucio fast enough. Musketeer surviving long enough to get that sound barrier off. And this is it. We're going to need to see a miracle. Well, maybe not a miracle, but a contest here on the side of Valhalla. I think they will for sure get it. The X Hunter going to probably have to charge in order to get it. Actually, they can use the Bob to initiate, and here we go. Now PowerPoint with a perfect barrage, getting two right off the bat, and I think Valhalla will be able to extend this map for a little bit longer. They just need to take out Red Hood Kitty and AKA Reflex. I think that will definitely be it. We play on, on Temple of Anubis. It's an incredibly close map here on Valhalla. Uh, on Temple of Anubis. Valhalla trying to keep their playoff hopes alive, keep this reverse sweep, or start this reverse sweep going, but they do have less in the time bank, but they get to attack first, so if they're able to maybe get point A, that would be a huge chance for them to possibly win this map. Ready. Definitely, any team could take it here, though. Go either way. So we're gonna see that Ryan Sigma once again from the side of Valhalla. They've really liked this comp right now. Brow Daddy and BX Hunter have kind of swapped roles. Brow Daddy being the normal main tank now on the off tank roll and BX Hunter typically playing with Narya is gonna be on the line, not PowerPoint. We're gonna see a pretty similar comp to what they ran previously on this attack, but we are gonna see a couple of differences here on the defense, point A defense here for White Walkers. They're gonna be on the Reaper with uh, Lucio Moira, so they are running a pretty brawl heavy comp. We'll have to see if they can play aggressive enough, aka Reflex, kind of hiding here. That ledge. Opportunity to go in. Be very careful. Speaking up behind Lomasala, while unfortunately misses the jump, though. And yeah, now they're in desperate need of help, but it is able to wraith away and get the support they need. The X Hunter is incredibly low getting the demon, so should be good for now. Not PowerPoint, also incredibly low trying to take out. Reflex up here on the high ground. This is it. If Valhalla don't win this team fight here, they will only be able to get the draw, and that is a good start for White Walkers. Silent Tamer getting the double kill. And yeah, this is not looking good for Valhalla. Overtime will be initiated, but I don't think it's gonna matter. Silent Tamer even able to build up the tire 
gets a double kill on both of the supports, no contest will be possible. And Valhalla, they still have a chance here. They can get the draw and keep the series alive, but this is definitely a tough little sting to the momentum. You know, All order. Yeah, you, you've played pretty well on this map so far, and to, at best have to settle for a draw and guarantee yourself that you're going to need to win three maps still in order to fully complete this reverse sweep, I guess, <laughs> which definitely an interesting... It, it's always interesting, you know, with within playoffs, you know, it's, it's first to three, so is it still a reverse sweep if you have a draw in the middle? I guess it is, but Attackers it's kind of interesting. Normally you think seconds. of a reverse sweep being a team winning the first two maps and then the other team winning the rest interesting of the Interesting choice maps. here. We do see a Sombra on the side of White Walkers on this attack with only a minute. It's going to be interesting if they can build up that EMP quick enough. They must be looking to hack maybe a shield off or something and get a, a really key pick. It's the only reason I can think of a pick the Sombra, unless they're going to maybe go to the scout. Perhaps they're going to roll Silent Tamer on the Junkrat has pretty much been playing. Junkrat this whole time, I think, played a little bit of far on their point B attack, so here we go. Yep. Reflex trying to get in position to find those hacks. Good rotation here from White Walkers. Looks like they're gonna go to the high ground, but also a good wall from not PowerPoint and a nice pin from BX Hunter onto Musketeer. That's huge. Already has about 12% on Charles on the Shadow Not anymore. Charles able to really get a nice fire strike. And yeah, White Walkers? Gonna have to back up here if they want any chance at getting another fight. Yeah, they are. Unfortunately, Reflex tried to harass the back line, but they were way so far away from White Walkers, they had no assistance, no way to to get help for them there, unfortunately. So here we go. All six players back, but another great wall! This time walls off Charles, and now here we go, 15 seconds left. Can Valhalla get the draw in order to continue this series? Lone Loss already down, both of the jump rats already down. Bookstar is also finding the pick onto Charles. Good res from Weird Hex to get that jump rat. And I think we are going to see this series continue as Valhalla finding the picks and they even build up the first halts. And yeah, you're right. I don't know if the Sombra was the correct pick. He's going in a draw. Yeah. Valhalla keeping their playoff hopes alive, and you know, a, a draw is always a bittersweet experience. But the fact that White Walkers didn't win the map maybe took a little momentum out of their sails, and it might be an opening, especially with not power points really kind of coming online here. Might be the opening that they need in order to get get this reverse sweep. Mm-hmm. Unless I'm incorrect, the team that picked last still picks in the case of a draw, correct? Yes, yes. So we will see Valhalla be able to pick the escort map of their choice. That's what I thought. You're gonna have to excuse me for a sec. I need to refill my water. Ooh. Okay. Sparkling or stilled? <laughs> Sparkling, duh. He's bougie, don't you know that? <laughs> <laughs> bougie Kirby. <laughs> so, who are you looking for uh, so far for MVPs? I'm gonna give us a preview. Ooh. Uh, if they bring him back in and he has it all of decent of a map, I am leaning hard towards Richard the Hard. A hard lean towards him. The snipes on the tires are tremendous. The shatters on King's Row. He, it's just all around great play. Bleem as well is doing, is doing really good. Brow Daddy, I think, also deserves a shout out. But I think Richard has been the most consistently 
great tank in so far tonight. DPS is kind of rough because both teams kind of going with a, other than Lil Musala, kind of a rotating cast of crew of DPS. Yeah. So we haven't really seen that many like people in from more than one, maybe two map. So it's kind of hard to pick that. If if uh, we don't see some more recurs, we might have to just go with whoever had the biggest impact on the map they were in. Uh, support. I am towards I'm... Masala for DPS. I could definitely see that. Masala's been pretty decent all around. I think they've had some pop-off moments as well. But I definitely think it's still take a... somebody could take it from them pretty easily, depending on how this map goes. Yeah. I can agree with that. What and do you then think you for tank? Support. Uh, for tank? What do you think for tank? I think... So far. I mean, I think Bleem for, for Tank, just mm. because of like the first map arguable. and second map that we saw, yeah, popped off on that Zarya. And Sigma, mm -hmm. I, I believe they were playing Sigma, is not too bad either. It's really good, actually. I definitely can't fault picking Bleem over Richard, either. The, 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 both of them have been tremendous tonight. Support's a little rough as well, but I, I, I'm, I'm leaning towards Muscadier right now. That yeah. Lucio stall was huge. Mm-hmm. That could have been the, the time bank difference that Valhalla needed, you know, if they were maybe able to attack second, maybe have their win condition a little bit more in front of them, they could have maybe taken Temple of Anubis here. Do we have a uh, escort map selected yet? Not yet. Mm -mm. But also, Book of Sorrows has been kind of quiet, but also very reliant in their play tonight, so I definitely am watching them as well. Yeah. What do y'all think, yeah, chat? Definitely. Reflex? Reflex was really good on King's Row support. Yeah. I mean, I, I for the first map that we've seen Reflex play in uh, as support. We're going to see... We're going to see uh, Valhalla pick Rialto here, and I love that choice. Because... It's a perfect map for not PowerPoint to possibly play some Widow and really pop off here. Reflex will come in again. The, the only maybe better choice is Junker Town, I guess, but... Yeah, especially when you have two elite snipers in. I uh, definitely won't fault the team picking uh, Junker Town when you got both Lil Masala and PowerPoint available. Especially the way they were playing, I, I definitely wouldn't have been faulted them for picking uh, Junker Town. Especially when you see Drogon in, you know there's likely to be a Pharah. I do like them keeping in PowerPoint in so they could be able to have a hit scan. Or who knows? And interesting, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. White Walkers. Elect to to defend first, which does make sense as Rialto is certainly one of the hardest maps in the game to attack, but you could also argue that the, attacking first and setting your win condition is actually really nice on this map. Like, say you get it just a little bit before point B, like that now you know that you have a really good chance at holding there because of that corner that's incredibly tough to get around for the attackers. So we'll have to see because, you know, if, if Valhalla can have a good attack here, maybe get through point B and maybe even capture all three points, you know, that, that'll be huge. So I, I am a little interested to see if White Walkers have a plan on defense here, obviously, if they get the full hold here, that will be probably GG's, although you could also argue that point A on Rialto is difficult, depending on where the payload ends. Everyone took a bathroom break, and uh, we're waiting on some people now. Yeah, definitely, definitely intense right now. We don't really have like a a half time, I guess. So these between map breaks are definitely the 
best opportunity they do have. What is it? Seven minutes in playoffs. So, or technically, you almost technically have ten minutes because both teams have five. So. One thing that is interesting to note, no matter who of these teams moves on, they actually did both beat their would-be opponent, Pizza Planet, in the regular season, so it'll be interesting to see the, the rematch of both of those games. The Valhalla one was incredibly close. White Walker's game, not as much, but you could certainly argue that Pizza Planet struggled more than they had all season and they were still getting a lot of their newer players kind of situated and of course considering how they've been playing in the playoffs I don't think you can discount them Definitely be interesting to see how the teams play on this map. Give you a little funny, interesting fact for these next 10 seconds while we wait for the picks. I was playing this map the other day, and I hooked the Diva Bomb as Roadhog off the map into the little water with the gondola. It dropped all the way into the water, you couldn't even see it anymore. Still killed my support. How? We don't no. know. <laughs> yep. Did that, did that happen in the match? No, 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 it happened in a comp game with me and Strawberry before okay. the match. That's... Okay, I was gonna I don't remember that, but... That would've been tragic. It, it, I just dropped it off the bridge. I hooked it and dropped it off the bridge, and literally it was like gone it, off the it screen. It must've still maybe had some line of sight from the top. And it must've yeah. just barely clipped the support. Yeah, it must've. But alright, let's see what we have here. We have Ryan Zari on the side of Richard and Bleem. A Pander from Young Drogon, we have Ash and Pharah, so a lot of spam damage, and AKA Reflex. What do we have for the side of Valhalla, Kirby? We are gonna see that Widow on the side of Valhalla, not PowerPoint. Definitely with a chance to really pop off here. We are gonna see that same Sigma Ryan from Proud Addy and PX Hunter. A lot, of, a lot of similar stuff from Valhalla still definitely have found the team comp that they want to ride or die with, with that Zen seed. As well as Ravioli staying going back to the Sombra this time around to be able to more effectively build up an EMP now that they have more than just a minute. But Young Drogon actually taking off the counter and not power points, so White Walker's doing a good job here right off the bat. Okay, the Flex did have to use the immortality field to save Richard, and Richard actually might be in a little bit of trouble, but does get the healing that they need, and they are actually getting dangerously close to that shatter that could turn this fight on its head. You see Halo'd going through here, and they're getting the pick onto not PowerPoint, who does swap to the McCree. That will be Les, however. There's the animatrix coming out from Reflex. And Richard kind of loose the shatter there, and Brow Daddy with a nice counter. Ooh, what happened? Did he accidentally charge into a wall and not able to follow up on the shatter? No matter though, and that PowerPoint did find the open opening pick, but Kokosaros gets taken down and Cloud Lemon gets the res onto Pander. Will he be able to get the res onto the Zingata? I don't know. It might not even matter as the tanks get two picks. Young Drogon not gonna find anything with the barrage, but the damage is more than enough to be able to win this team fight here for White Walkers. Again, this side for Valhalla this time, I don't know how I feel about this uh, Sombra, especially with no ults other than maybe Shatter that really combo that well with it. You don't have a D.Va or really much ults that combo great with it, and they're not seeming to really capitalize on the hack that much. I would like to see a swap after this EMP for sure. So here we go. Oh, and Book of Sorrow's going down right away. We'll get res by the ant, but EX Hunter down as well, not PowerPoint incredibly low. And this will likely have to be Valhalla backing up again, although that is a nice pick onto Young Drogon. That might be able to get rezzed on, not 100% sure where they 
Oh, it doesn't look like they will be able to res, so perhaps Valhalla might have the advantage here, especially if they go aggressive with the EMP. Raphael is staying not quite in position, still kind of coming out of spawn here. The reflex is down, the headshots are not power point. And they're throwing in Bob, not going to be able to contest the point. A lot of alts coming on both sides, and we do see the EMP being comboed with the high noon. That will get two kills. Valhalla in good position right now. Will White Walkers be able to recontest here as the payload approaches point A? It does not look like they will be able to, and that will give Valhalla some extra time here on this map. But they still have a very tough task ahead of them to get through point B. Ooh! Huge. Yeah. Beautiful shatter from Richard will be able to immediately stop the momentum from Valhalla, but they have the close spawn, so definitely turnable here from the side of Valhalla. Ravioli staying still on the Sombra here. Ooh, has to be careful. Look at that weaving through the enemy team. Surprisingly, did not get found out. Shonkron's hiding behind them, Kirby. He's got Garage. He's hiding behind the team. Let's see. They're gonna throw in the grab. They might not even need to use the barrage at all as they already get two picks off of the Graviton Surge. And yeah, that will almost certainly be another team fight victory. Although Young Trogon accidentally does too much damage themselves and does fall. And I don't think Cloud Ram Lemon is gonna be able to get that res. So here we go, Valhalla gonna maybe try and press this advantage while they have it. The X Hunter. Maybe going on a flank to try and get the Shatter now going relatively down main. Um, Rogan on his way back. Pander does have Bob. That will be able to contest the payload, but the picks are going in favor of Valhalla for now. Young Drogon pops the barrage, able to get two kills, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Pack comes out onto Bob. They will be able to get him out of the fight, and the payload will continue to move here. Although, uh... Theoretically, you do need to be on the payload in order for it to move. So, here we go. Minute and a half left here for Valhalla to capture point B. They have a couple alts to their name, whereas Valhalla don't really have anything. And a nice shatter from BX Hunter. Good immortality out from Reflex, though, to keep him alive. And now Richard is the one that has the shatter ready. In fact, he's able to take out the BX Hunter. A powerful able to take a young Drogon. We'll see if any of the reses can come out from either of these mercies. I guess we will see Cloud Run able to get the pick onto, or the res onto Young Drogon. This Richard kind of with the shatter into Brow Daddy's shield, but overall. <gasps> back half! Back half! Oh back no! Cap. Oh no! Oh my goodness gracious! The biggest C9 probably of the season! What a back cap from Ravioli staying! Gives them wow. an extra minute and a half. That was crazy. Just with this. Oh, just when this game couldn't get crazier. Oh my goodness. So now here we go. Young Drogon. Able to get two picks right now, but the spawn advantage will heavily favor Valhalla and EX Hunter, even able to get aggressive. Reflex tried to save Richard with the immortality field. Here we go, though. White Walkers able to stabilize here for now, but look at all these alts coming online for Valhalla. This is going to be a tough fight for mm -hmm. next fight for White Walkers to win. So now here we go, White Walkers backing up because they obviously do not want to take the fight right off the bat there. Cloud Daddy going with the Forbidden Flux and that six man EMP. They're going to combo that with the Shatter and the Bog. So here we go, already a good start here on this team fight for Valhalla, but the Reflex able to take out not Power Point, and we are going to see the Amp Matrix come out that will force out the Transcendence from Book of Sorrows and Young Drogon coming down. Waiting out that transcendence gets two, but the X Hunter actually takes out the Far Mercy duo. But I I don't think that Valhalla will be able to 
win this team fight, they're gonna have to back up, and they did use almost everything that they had. This is gonna be a tough ask, especially with stagger kills onto Brown Daddy and Focus Sorrows. We'll have to you see uh, Drogon on the farm road as well. And BX Hunter gets hacked! Beautiful hack by Young Drogon now on the Sombra. And look at this, White Walker's going aggressive. BX Hunter did get red, but that was almost a ill-advised res. And I don't even think anyone's going to be able to touch here on the side of Valhalla. So here we go, the win condition is set for White Walkers. If they're able to get it roughly about two-thirds of the way through point C, they will be moving on to the championship against Pizza Planet, but Valhalla can remain alive in this series if they're able to hold it anywhere before there, and on Rialto, there are a lot of spots to do that. Definitely interesting to see what the White Walkers come out with here. The wind condition in mind and what they've been running, they have the information. Let's see what they do with it. Ready for battle. Maybe Widow Sombra. Okay, we do see a lot of damage from the side of Valhalla with the Junkrat Torb. Maybe looking to take down uh, Far with that uh, turret as an option, but with no fire in sight, might not even have to worry about that be interesting young Drogon flashing the somber for right now I think that that actually could be a, a pretty decent pick here although maybe not with these particular DPS although you could continually hack the Rhyme we'll he could also be using it to scout as well perhaps maybe once they see that they don't have a you know a typical hit scan Maybe they will go uh, back to the Drogon going in the back, looking for an opportunity here. Cloud Lemon with an early pick! Ooh, Cloud Lemon with a beautiful volley. On to not PowerPoint, not sure if he had the Discord over there. Early in the brutality field out from Reflex, so... Maybe a chance for Valhalla to turn this, but... This is already not looking good. Yo, Drogon! Who needs hacks when you just have a great... Rapid fire gun in your that arsenal. Uzi. Yeah. Oh. And we j they just cannot back up young Drogon again. Look how aggressive he's getting. Even getting the hack onto Book of Sorrows. This is just too much. And that will be an unbelievably quick point A cap from White Walkers. Folks, that might be a world record here on. Rialto, I don't know if you can do it much faster than that. Drogon takes out power point! Oh my goodness gracious. He's looking for a hack. Absolutely yeah. popping off on this Sombra, not even needing to really get many hacks. And the tanks are low on the side of Valhalla, and there's the EMP. Things just keep getting worse for Valhalla. Proud Daddy is incredibly low. He's at the bubble and is getting the healing, so we'll be able to survive for now. But the payload continues to move at breakneck pace. And Pander finding the pick on Tarabi. Only staying cannot PowerPoint. If anything to possibly halt this momentum. This is gonna be tough. Another headshot from Pander who's coming alive in this series. You see the shatter coming out from Richard. Doesn't get slept, however, so not too much follow-up. Reducing the nano boost onto the X Hunter, but he will get quickly bursted down. And this will almost certainly be point B being taken by Ooh, not PowerPoint though, getting a couple picks. Are they gonna be able to contest? You're gonna be grounded. No, they're not gonna be able to. And now we see White Walkers with five minutes. You only six. 36 seconds in order to just get it halfway through point C. This is gonna be a brutal situation here for Valhalla and their con lab. It's a nice shatter from EX Hunter, but my walkers are all in the room, it's gonna be tough to follow up on, but it does happen anyway, so here we go. That will be a stabilization here for Valhalla for five minutes. 
I don't know, especially trying to defend the first half of point C. Like, I could maybe see it if they got to, if, if they yeah. maybe just barely got stopped before look, the end of point Look where they C. have to hold. They have to hold up here to have a chance. I mean, and they have to withstand possibly two, two to three EMPs from Young Drogon unless he wants to swap off the Sombra, which I don't think he should. He's playing incredibly well. I mean, this is gonna take some heroics from someone on Valhalla right now. Damn, Matrix coming out from Reflex. Power point though, getting the headshot on the cloud member and Ravioli save building up another molten core, but the picks are swinging back in favor of White Walkers actually. Fairly even right now. Richard and kind of Oh another no, angles off the map! Player. Oh, that actually might be huge, especially with Pender getting the pick onto B Ant, but Ravioli staying able to take advantage of Pander maybe being a little bit too far forward. So here we go, just about a minute and a half being burned off the clock here from White Walkers. And there's Richard using the shatter, not gonna find anything. Good bubble from Brad Heavy on Chirabi, only saying to block that. Here we go, there's the EMP, it's a six man EMP, it's huge, but Brown Daddy. Or Brad Yolusane actually able to take out Young Drogon, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. The EMP was just too huge, and I think that will be it. White Walkers so incredibly close. They even have the transcendence and the grab. In fact, look at this. Gleam's gonna go aggressive, throw the grab right down the choke. Might not even need it, honestly. Won't need it. Or does use it anyway. And that will be White Walkers clinching their spot in the finals, tier three. And another great performance here on the side I, I, of White Walkers. I mentioned it before to you, uh, Timepiece. I told you Masala was being consistent, but if DPS pops off, I think they have a chance to take it away from them. And I think Young Drogon just took DPS MVP for them right now. With mm -hmm. that yep. map was just 100%. incredible. They were great on King's Row as well. But uh, well, before we get to MVPs, you know, we got a shout out to Valhalla. They were rocky all season. They, they managed to make it into playoffs in a really tough battle. Took out Nova, one of the highest seeds, yeah, the got, second seed, and got, almost I had a few, few, like a few fights away from taking some maps off of White Walker and maybe winning it. So you definitely, mm -hmm. as, as much as it's fortunate to not make it to the finals, I've been there too many times. It, they have a lot of things to be proud of for this season, and this, if they if they manage to keep a lot of their roster, will come back really strong next season. I'm sure of it. As for the rest of the EMP, so yeah, Young Drogon, very obvious, will get the DPS MVP this time around. Played incredibly well on both of the maps he played. As for tank MVP, I actually am inclined to actually give this to the BX Hunter. I actually thought he was playing really well on the Rhine there in the second half. I would actually maybe argue that Val had maybe argue that they had better tank play than White Walkers. Bleem was very good as well, as he always is, but Valhalla actually playing really well, especially when they started to run those Rhine Sigma comps that were actually pretty effective, and I think it, BX Hunter able to come in and play that Rhine and let Brow Daddy play the Sigma I think was huge. Brow Daddy definitely deserves a mention as well, playing a great Sigma and was pretty solid at first on the Rhine, but I definitely think that BX Hunter was more consistent throughout this series and definitely in those last two maps outplayed Richard and Charles a little bit, I I, I would say. What, what do you guys think? Because then, then I was thinking about giving support MVP to Musketeer. I think it's BX Hunter played a ridiculously aggressive playstyle. They had a lot of questionable pins. Some of them managed to get some big picks though as well. So it's one of those like I, I see a lot of bumper in BX Hunter, but the B might stand for bumper because there was a lot of questionable decisions being made. But I feel like a lot of those questionable decisions somehow ended up working in their favor as well. So I I th I definitely think you could argue BX Hunter is MVP. They they definitely played here to say I'm gonna let it all out here and I'm gonna play risky and if it pays off it pays off. 
You know, I, I feel like they were definitely willing to play that play style, and a team that plays that play style is often going to win. And, and it's it's interesting, you know, like. A lot of times, White Walkers, they make teams play passive by the way they played aggressive. I don't know, Valhalla, they actually did a decent job at playing aggressive in a lot of those fights. A lot of times, they just weren't able to get all the picks they needed, and I really think it was a combo of these tank players, and I think maybe, you know, you could argue BX Hunter went a little aggressive a few times too many, or, and got picked off a couple times but man like you you just can't play scared against white walkers i almost respect the bx hunter for for maybe playing a little more aggressive than he should because it's like let's just make white walkers work for this victory and you could argue that especially on those last two maps white walkers had to work for this victory so yeah I, I'm gonna disagree with you, Seth. I am very inclined to give the BX Hunter MVP here. I, what do I you think, I agree Tyrese? with you guys on this. I think Valhalla definitely showed that they are not a team to be, you know, messed with. They definitely showed just why they won that last uh, match against Nova. They definitely showed that tonight. And especially against White Walkers, which is like a team in Tier 3 who... I think they're still number one, right? A team nobody yeah. really wants to mess with. Um, Valhalla definitely was like, you're going to work for this victory. And work is exactly what they did. Um, but uh, for tank MVPs, I, I can go both ways. I, I think, personally, I think Bleem is still like tank MVP for me. Just because throughout Reverse all of those maps. And, and yeah. then you'd maybe give like, like maybe Book of Sorrows. The, the support mm -hmm. MVP, maybe. I would be down to do that as well. Honestly, I can see that because I'm, Saros is very I'm down quiet for either, system. yeah. I'm down for He either. was actually building Transcendence really well. I think he was playing Ana there on that last map. Had some nice sleep darts. Yeah, honestly, if, if I, I would be willing to call an op. Obviously, we all agree Young Drogon literally just completely just his mind on <laughs> Rialto there. That was one of the best Sombra performances I've ever seen at this level. That I, I didn't he must have had that Travis was. Scott meal from McDonald's before the game, so he could eat sicko <laughs> mode. That was, yeah, that was I a great think performance. So, so, for support, I, I mean, I agree Book of Sorrows was building up those trans super fast and was literally like shutting down pander a, a couple times i think is whenever i saw it but i think that reflex's bath has to have we gotta give one to valhalla yeah that's yeah. the thing is if we're gonna give it to bleen we have to give a support mvp to valhalla then i think that reflex definitely needs an honorable mention i can agree but with that i, I do cool agree with you guys maybe. on those mvps yeah, yeah, also, Muscadier with that huge stall out also is a shout out as well, I think, deserving. Yeah. Yeah, Muscadier played really well as well. It's, it's tough because it's White tough Walkers, one. again, it's not the individuals. Well, granted, Young Drogon really popped up in this game, but it's not the individuals. It's the team that mm -hmm. is the strong suit of this team. And once again, we saw it. We saw so many times they were maybe down in one fight, but they were able to quickly stabilize. They do a great job at comboing alts. They, they know their win conditions. They play the comps that they're confident with. That's what makes them so strong. So it's, you could give it to almost anyone on White Walkers because that's, they're all just great players. And that they're great because of the way that they help each other and set each other up because of their team synergy. But yeah, I think I think I would be down to go with Young Drogon, Bleem, and Book of Sorrows. With the honorable mentions, I am in agreement with that. And that will uh, is there any uh, disagreements? Should we change anything up, or are we going to go with that? I'd, I'd um, be happy with that. Yeah. Okay, so we said right. uh, tank was Bleem, DPS is Drogon, support is Book of Sorrows, and honorable mention Correct. to Reflex. Reflex. Okay. All Reflex. Right. I, I will give it to Muscadier. Uh, I'll also honorable mention to uh, Muscadier and BX Hunter as well. 
Oh boy, three honorable mentions. Why not? It's it's, it's semi-finals with lots of nurse players, you know? You're right, you're right. Well, that will that... conclude this game. So now we have the grand finals for Tier 3 decided. White Walkers, Pizza Planet. My goodness, I can already... I can feel it. It's going to be a <laughs> classic. Truly, I'm excited. Sadly, I won't be able to cast it like I've been able to cast the last two finals, as I will almost certainly be playing in that game. But no matter who casts it, I hope you enjoy that game. Make sure to tune in. Tell your friends. Tell everyone in the server. Make sure to check it out. We're, we're almost wrapping up here. Season 4 of... Overwatch Oasis League, it's been heck of a ride, and I can't wait for next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank Tell you. your friends, everybody. I want to see 300 viewers in chat when I watch the replay. 300! 300! 300. 300. Let's do it! That would, that would almost triple our previous high. But, yep, thank you, Timepiece, for the cast. Thank you to my partner in crime, Psycho Mantis. And we will see you guys, hopefully, for the championship.